Hello, welcome back. We are talking about vorticity. What is vorticity? Well, what we're interested in when we're talking about vorticity, that spinning ability of our column of water, what we're interested in is the vertical component of its vorticity. And we've seen that we can break that down into two pieces. The first, the relative vorticity, the squiggly zeta, and that is going to be equal to the shear in, um, of the V component of our velocity minus the shear of the U component of our velocity. So that's dV dx minus du dy. And so we see if we have some shear that that will give us a relative vorticity. Now, if we add the relative vorticity plus our planetary vorticity, we end up with our absolute vorticity. And what we see is our planetary vorticity is in fact equal to our very familiar Coriolis parameter F, which is two omega sine of the latitude, sine theta. Now that would be the full story. That would be all we were worrying about if we were thinking about just a paddle wheel, but we're not. We're thinking about a column of water and a column of water, when it's spinning, is going to have different water parcels that are a different distance to the, act, the axis of rotation. So we have to take into account what happens to our water column if it moves into an area where it gets stretched and all those water parcels are now closer to the axis of rotation. Well, to think about that, we're going to look at what happens to an ice skater. All right, so here we have an ice skater and she has given herself a torque. She started to push and she's spinning and she's got her arm and her leg out and then she brings them and she's not pushing at all, but she starts going faster just by bringing in her arms and her leg and bringing her mass closer to her center of rotation. So what we see from this is that it's not just the absolute vorticity that's important, it's also the how stretched our water column is. And so we think about that as our layer of thickness depth D. And when we bring that into account, we end up with what we call our potential vorticity, where we have our absolute vorticity divided by D, where D is the layer thickness depth. So we can imagine that if the water column gets stretched, so D gets bigger, deeper, so it gets stretched. It's like our ice skater bringing her hands in, and so the absolute vorticity must also increase. So if the bottom of our fraction goes up, the top of our fraction must also go up in order to maintain our potential vorticity. So this is what we're trying to conserve. It's conservation of potential vorticity, which includes all three of these components, our relative vorticity, our planetary vorticity, and our layer thickness depth. Conservation of potential vorticity. It is very similar to what you've learned about in your physics classes, uh, conservation of angular momentum. And I've put a couple videos of conservation of angular momentum on Canvas. Go check those out. That'll help you to understand what we're trying to talk about here when we're thinking about conservation of potential vorticity. So our potential vorticity has multiple components. The relative or local vorticity, which we saw is due to the shear, plus the planetary vorticity, which is just equal to our Coriolis parameter F and is due to our latitude. So if we change latitude, we change our planetary vorticity and our layer thickness, which is the depth of our water column. So we can change the depth of our layer thickness as well. All right, we're gonna look at a couple examples and see how we conserve potential vorticity in the ocean. So the first example, we have our water column starting here with no, with no significant relative vorticity. It's not spinning due to any sort of shear. However, it is at a certain latitude and it has a certain uh, depth of the water columns at a certain height. 
Now, what happens if this water column moves northward and it maintains the same depth? So that doesn't change. However, it moves northward to another latitude. So now it has changed its latitude. Well, in order to figure out what's going to happen to it, we need to look at our conservation of potential vorticity. So here is our potential vorticity. And we've said that D has not changed. However, F has increased. So F increases as we move northwards to a higher latitude and D does not change. In order to keep this the same, to conserve this potential vorticity, if F goes up and D doesn't change, zeta, our relative vorticity, must go down. All right, how do we get a zeta to go down when it started at zero? Well, it must now be negative. So take out your right hands, put your thumb down, and look at the direction that your fingers are curling. They should be going in the clockwise direction. So we end up with a negative relative vorticity or a clockwise spinning of our water column. All right. What? Let's look at the next example. Okay, in this case, we now have our water columns starting out similarly, no relative vorticity to start with, no significant relative vorticity to start with. It's not spinning due to any sort of shear. It's at a certain latitude, and this time our latitude is not changing. It's staying at that same latitude. However, it's going from a depth of H1 to a depth of H2, so it's getting stretched. It's getting stretched, and just like our ice skater, it's bringing in its arms and its legs close to it. So what's going to happen? We look at our potential vorticity. Our depth has increased. F has not changed. So zeta must change, and in order for our absolute vorticity to increase when our depth increases, zeta must increase. So our relative vorticity must increase, going from zero to something greater than zero. Take out your right hands, put your thumb upwards, and look at the direction that your fingers are curling, and they should be curling in the counterclockwise direction. So we end up with a positive relative vorticity, or a counterclockwise rotation of our water column. All right, next example. In this case, we are again are starting with our um, a certain depth and our relative vorticity is starting at a minimal value and our relative vorticity does not change. However, we go to a deeper depth again. So moving along our water column um, ends up in a has a deeper la layer thickness of depth. All right. So here is our potential vorticity and we need to conserve it. Our depth has increased. We have got a deeper layer thickness depth. Our relative vorticity has not changed. It is going, it's staying the same. So our, the only thing that can happen is that F must go up. And for F to go up, that means that our water column will move northwards. So now we have increased our depth. We must increase our latitude. So our water column will move northwards. All right. You have a lot of uh, example problems to work through, of some clicker questions of conservation of potential vorticity, where you can work on these on your own. It's in the quizzes. You have conservation of potential vorticity clicker questions. I'd like you to work through some of these different, these different ideas yourself. Um, you'll also read section 4.2.1, which explains vorticity and gives you some of these ideas. You also have some clicker questions. Um, you also have some questions to work on that are from the book that have been put into a quiz for you so that you can just do them directly online and you'll be working on those as well. All right, enjoy working on vorticity and put any questions that you have in the discussion section and I'll see you next time to work more on chapter four.